Kevin, thanks a lot for uh, for taking the time. I appreciate it. Um, let's start. Let's start with a little bit of the background for you. I, um, most people know uh, your dad, Fred, Jamie, <laughs> Gary, and, and the family come from curling. But when did you start? And I, was it in Yellowknife? You know what? It's a funny question. I actually don't even really know how old I was when I started. I, I don't think I started young these days um, compared to what kids are doing. I think I was probably around 12, and it was actually way up in Inuvik the first time I threw. Uh, we lived there for a few years. Didn't really take it up much then. Um, moved to Yellowknife, and that's where I really kind of took it up with a passion. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, no, 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 <laughs> not many people know where that even is. <laughs> so then, then you ended up coming to Calgary uh, after juniors. Um, when, when was that? And, and yeah, I came down to go to university at, uh, University of Calgary and, uh, I just never left, you know, with, um, lots of job opportunities back in the NWT, but if you kind of go back there, you're never going to get out and, you know, it's not, a, I wanted to curl and living up there is not conducive to, you know, curling at the highest levels, which, which at that time I kind of wanted to do. So, uh. It's been awesome. I love Calgary, Alberta. It's it's you know it's my it it's been my home forever, and uh, it's uh, it's worked out well. Well, you put a great team together. You were young when we first played you in that Players Championship. Um, it was you and John. Was Mark maybe Mark Kennedy on your team too? Maybe not. Who was on your? What was that first competitive team you had? We played each other like. Uh, you were young. Yeah, no, but way back when, before, <laughs> uh, even before I played with Johnny Mole, you know, I played with uh, my brother and uh, Scott Cripps and Mike Mike Westland, and we we had some good games at uh, Provincials, and then, yeah, and eventually I played with uh, with Johnny Mole and Mark Kennedy and Paul Moffitt. And that's and, when you beat us in the in, in the, the players, in yeah, the and uh, we had a, we had a, I think we played together two or three years, and, you know, we had decent years but as you know as well as anyone Alberta is a tough place to get out of right <laughs> yes and still is yeah. today uh, when you talk when you look back at curling I, I'd love to hear from behind your eyes the biggest changes that you've seen in our sport um probably two things uh you know the uh ath- athleticism as far as the sweeping I mean the sweeping these days compared to the old days is is crazy you know part of that is knowing how to sweep too i mean remember when we used to play and had no clue how how we were sweeping right i mean if 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 a guy could have figured that out 20 years ago i mean you know could have could have been uh could have could have won some games (laughs) but uh and then you know just the what it takes to win um back you know back 15 years ago um you could kind of maybe show up and, and win a lot of your games. And now uh, that's, you know, it's way harder just across the world. The, the world teams are so much better. Um, how to win. So part of that is sponsorship and the business model. And um, you've done very well that way. Um, so I, I would like to ask you from that, from that side of things, uh, how do you set up your business um, with, with, your, with the curling part on the ice and, of course, off the ice? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, we've been very successful on the ice and off the ice with sponsors. And, um, you know, you have to have something to give to the sponsors. Uh, you know, they, they don't just give you money, right? They want something out of it. And I feel like we've um, given back over the years and represented their brands as well. But, uh, you know, I would love to just curl. But, uh, you know, I've also at the same time kept a, you know, a, a full-time job and it's tough, you know, you, you got to keep winning to keep the sponsors and you got to win to get the sponsors. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, I've been, I've been fortunate. Curling has, uh, treated me awesome and I got no, no regrets. Um, let's talk about the next four years, the next uh, Olympic cycle. That seems to be, seems to be Kevin, kind of the way everybody works these days. Um, you're still playing with the old team for the next couple of events till the end of the season, which makes sense. Um, let's talk about your new team and how, how did it come together? Um, I, I love the fact there's a young person on it, but how did, who, who's the new team and how did it get together? Yeah. I mean, we're, I'm going to be playing with, uh, you know, obviously someone, you know, well, and your, your son (laughs) and, uh, um, Brad Teeson and Tyler Tardy. And, and I'm looking forward to it for me. It's, uh, it, it'll be, uh, 
totally different team than what I've had. Um, you know, kind of some more quiet individuals and uh, probably give me a little more chance to kind of take charge, which is probably something I should do. But, um, you know, I'm looking for, forward to it. Uh, you know, not many people know Tyler, but uh, his junior success uh, speaks for itself. And um, obviously, uh, Brad and Carrick of their same, their resume is, is exceptional as well. So, uh, you know, it's a good Alberta based team. And I, I think we'll, I think, I think our personalities will work well together. I, I'm really excited about it. And, and the reason is from my point of view, being a curling fan, I am super excited that Tyler Tardy, who I think the world of, like he, he's like a phenom, a young phenom coming up. And it's really, it's been hard for, for people like that to really grow in the sport quickly. And I, I'm, I'm super stoked to watch him underneath like your leadership and be able to, to gain all this experience quickly. What kind of time frame are you looking at um, or, or, or are you thinking about being able to, to get this team on stride? I don't know. That's, you know, that's a tough one. I mean, I definitely don't think uh, we're going to panic if we don't have a couple of good events right out of the gates, like some teams would. But um, like you said, he's a phenom. He's won so much. Um, I like that he came and played a couple of years of men's and uh, it's like you said, it, it's hard. I mean, um, that he, he wants to come and learn and play with an experienced team. Um, I think, and that'll, I think that'll work for the three of us, especially to have someone like that. Um, length of season. I need to ask you about that because you've got a young guy. Ty, well, actually, pretty, well, I can't even call Kark and Brad young anymore. They're pretty well, maybe experienced. I'm, maybe I'm just old. <laughs> <laughs> but you got Tyler, who's definitely young. And then, and you're at the other end. Um, okay. So length of season and how many games and your your strategy as far as season setup? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's hard to complain because we're fortunate to be playing in these great events, right? The Players' Championship, the Champions Cup. I mean, um, very lucky. But at the same time, yeah, it's September to May, um, so much longer than it used to be. But... If you're doing good, you're playing lots, and that's what you want to do, right? So, uh, like I said, uh, you know, no complaints, but um, it, it it gets lengthy, and especially towards the end of the season when you barely have ice, to, it's a bit of a crapshoot at the end, right? But, um, you know, I think this week will be awesome, and the Champions Cup, um, fortunate, you know. One, though, that I do want to talk to you about, because you've been in, I don't know how many major events, lots, um, the length of the events, um, we just watched uh, Brad and Nick play 15 games um, in a few days. Now they're here. They just played Sunday night, and only just a few hours later, they're back on the ice here in Toronto. So um, is there some way then in, in your mind that uh, we can have champions uh, claimed, crowned quicker? Or yeah, should we? That's tough. I mean, that event was a bit of a foregone conclusion, right? You could have played that game. You knew who was going to be in that final right off the right from the start, especially with, uh, you know, Moet not being there, you know, I've been fortunate to come from, you know, some worlds to the players and, uh, it's, it's fun. I'm sure they're not, they're not complaining, right. They're kind of free rolling and you know what, they're probably tired, but they're, they're in game form and, uh, they're going to do well just because of that versus a lot of us have not played many games in, you know, last couple of months. Um, uh, one other thing that, that, I've talked to quite a few of the players about, and that's the playoff systems, uh, systems <laughs> yeah, at, at various events. Um, do you think that there's a, some sort of a, a need to sort of keep it somewhat similar at events or, or uh, how do you view the, the various, so many varieties of, of playoffs in, in our sport? You know, I, I do think some, change is is good to have some different formats along along the year um for sure but it should be distinct in my view you know this event is going to be this way and this way and and uh you know you have your favorites and you have some that you think are stupid i mean let's be honest but um you know there, there's different formats and i mean at the at the end of the day the playoffs 
should should be similar. Um, but you know, I think variety is good. Yeah, no, no problem with that at all. No. I, I kind of agree. You know, we, we when we used to play in the uh, the triple knockouts versus round round robin events, uh, somebody like Ed Lukwich, we're going back a few years now, and Ed Lukwich <laughs> and Kerry Burtnick, um, Pat Ryan, these guys were good at coming through C. They would come through C, and oh my goodness, they get rolling. Whereas like our team, if we didn't come out of A, we weren't coming out, and and that was yeah. just the way it was. But I, I loved round robins, I, much better at that. But for some reason, Kerry Burton would lose his first couple and he's out of the round robin before he started. So you're right. There's like, do you have a preference when you come to events of be it triple knockout, double knockout, round robin? Is there one system that you like better than others or, or that you're more comfortable with, I should say? Yeah. Um, I've come out of sea lots in my life too, right? I've won, a, I think I won two of my briars coming out of the sea event from Alberta. Um, provincials which is a triple uh i think the triple is the fairest because every game matters uh versus some round robins you know half half the it probably at least half the games are, are meaningless so um but like i said i think i think most events should be triple where every game matters but it, it is good to have some round robin events or just different formats just to change it up sounds good kevin good luck this week thanks a lot Appreciate the time. Thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks.